Good morning, saints. I guess we don't have too many saints here. Good morning, sinners. Good morning, children of God. God bless. And as we begin this day, let us be at one with God as we share and allow God's presence to be with us during our prelude, which is shepherd. Good morning. Please join me in reading our opening prayer, and we will read this responsibly, and the words will be on your screen. God has created us to become brothers and sisters with Jesus Christ in the family of God. Let us praise the Lord, for in everything the Lord works for our good. God has called us to become the agents of the divine purpose. Let us praise the Lord, for in everything the Lord works for our good. God has loved us that we might mirror that love to one another. Let us praise the Lord, for in everything the Lord works for our good. God has made Christ to bear our image, that we might bear the image of Christ. Let us praise the Lord. For in everything the Lord works for our good. Let everything that breathes praise the Lord. I invite you to stand in body or in spirit for our opening hymn, which is in the red hymnal 730. O day of God, draw nigh.
please remain standing for the prayer of illumination, and we will read this together. Your face, O God, we seek as we call on your name. You hear us when we implore your mercy and grant us your grace that fills us with joy. We are your people, the heirs of your promise. We enter Christ's household in response to his call. Fill us now with your spirit. Form us and mold us as we extol you with praise. Amen. And please remain standing for our gospel reading. This is from Matthew chapter 13 and verses 31 through 33 and 44 through 52. Here's another illustration Jesus used. The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed planted in a field. It's the smallest of all seeds, but it becomes the largest of garden plants. It grows into a tree and birds come and make nests in its branches. Jesus also used this illustration. The kingdom of heaven is like the yeast a woman used in baking bread. Even though she put only a tiny, a little yeast in three measures of flour, it permeated every part of the dough. The kingdom of heaven is like a treasure that a man discovered hidden in a field. In his excitement, he hid it again and sold everything he owned to get enough money to buy the field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant on the lookout for choice pearls. When he discovered a pearl of great value, he sold everything he owned and bought it. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a fishing net that was thrown into the water and caught fish of every kind. When the net was full, they dragged it up onto the shore, sat down, and sorted the good fish into crates, but threw the bad ones away. That is the way it will be at the end of the world. The angels will come and separate the wicked people from the righteous, throwing the wicked into the fiery furnace where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Do you understand all these things? Yes, they said, we do. Then he added, every teacher of religious law who becomes a disciple in the kingdom of God is like a homeowner who brings from his storeroom new gems of truth as well as old. I invite you to have a seat, and we will read the epistle reading from Romans 8, 26 through 39. And the Holy Spirit helps us in our weakness. For example, we don't know what God wants us to pray for, but the Holy Spirit prays for us with groanings that cannot be expressed in words. And the Father who knows all hearts knows what the Spirit is saying, for the Spirit pleads for us believers in harmony with God's own will. And we know that God causes everything to work together for the good of those who love God and are called according to his purpose for them. For God knew his people in advance, and he chose them to become like his Son, so that his Son would be the firstborn among many brothers and sisters. And having chosen them, he called them to come to him. And having called them, he gave them right standing with himself. And having given them right standing, he gave them his glory. What shall we say about such wonderful things as these? If God is for us, who can be against us? Since he did not spare even his own son, but gave him up for us all, won't he also give us everything else? Who dares accuse us when God has chosen for his own? No one, for God himself has given us right standing with himself. Who then will condemn us? No one, for Jesus Christ died for us and was raised to life for us, and he is sitting in the place of honor at God's right hand, pleading for us. Can anything ever separate us from Christ's love? Does it mean he no longer loves us if we have trouble or calamity or are persecuted or hungry or destitute or in danger or threatened with death? As the scriptures say, 
For your sake, we are killed every day. We are being slaughtered like sheep. No, despite all these things, overwhelming victory is ours through Christ who loved us. And I am convinced that nothing can ever separate us from God's love. Neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither our fears for today nor our worries about tomorrow, not even the powers of hell can separate us from God's love. No power in the sky above or in the earth below, indeed, nothing in all creation will ever be able to separate us from the love of God that is revealed in Jesus Christ our Lord. This is the word of God to the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be, to God. be to God. Confused? Why not? I was confused. Hopefully all of you picked up a little packet when you came in, and I'm getting a nod in the back that yes, yes. <clears throat> What's it say on that packet? I'm listening. The kingdom of heaven is like. <clears throat> Open-ended, except in your little bottles you got something, hopefully. Hopefully it didn't come out some way. Some of you got uh, actually mustard seeds. Some of you got pearls. Not real, sorry about that. <clears throat> and some of you got yeast. So, parables. Difficult to understand. What's with this guy? This guy, Jesus. What's with him? Mustard seeds, yeast, buried treasures, pearls, and fish. He's a carpenter. He's not a gardener. He's not a baker. He's not a farmer. He's not a merchant. He's not a person who catches fish. Who is this guy? Last week, if you remember, he also was like a farmer. His parable was about a field being planted, starting to grow, and weeds growing up. What's he know about weeding? At least last week's sermon and that, and parable gave me an excuse not to weed this week. I was grateful for that. <clears throat> yes, Jesus was a carpenter. But Jesus was so in tune with the world and also with all of those individuals around him, he allowed himself to experience their living conditions, both good and both bad. He allowed himself the ability to move from himself into the persona of others. Now, a lot of us wipe that off and say, well, that's because he was divine. Not really. I don't believe that. I believe that the reason he could do that because he was totally human. He was an individual who walked the face of this earth. He was born, brought from a woman's womb because of his nature. He allowed himself to gather in the persona and the identity of those to whom he was speaking. Therefore, he wanted to share with them the glimpse of heaven that he himself experiences. He wanted them to identify beyond where they were at presently. The kingdom of heaven. What's it all about? 
These parables are a beckoning. A beckoning for all people, no matter where you see yourself. No matter what your experience is, it is a beckoning. A beckoning of a journey which you are taking. In this life, not in the life to come necessarily, but in this life, it is a promise to go beyond where we are at presently. So many times when we get older, we kind of feel, well, I've lived my life. But, no matter what our age is, no matter what our age is, we have the ability to come into the kingdom of God and the kingdom of heaven here. After all, that prayer that we say, that we call the Lord's Prayer, asks for the kingdom to come on earth as in heaven. It is a direction, a direction for each of us. And I believe if we really look at these parables, we can find that direction. It's no mistake that Jesus offers that in his prayer when he is teaching us how to pray. Mustard seed. Some of you have mustard seeds. So you're holding the kingdom of heaven right in your hand. But, but, in order for you to realize that kingdom of heaven, you have to do something. You have to allow that seed to grow. You have to allow that seed to grow into its full potential. That little seed, planted, begins to grow. Begins to grow, and finally, if we allow it to grow enough before we harvest it too soon, and use it for our own food, if we allow it to grow into its full potential, it becomes a place. A place that offers refuge for some else. A bird. A bird can then take and develop its nest there. Within that nest then comes new life, new potential, a potential that goes and reaches far beyond that small mustard seed. And it grows from seed to tree, from tree to nest, from nest to birds that fly and move throughout the kingdom. Do we have that potential? Do we have that potential to, first of all, nurture and take care of that which is given to us, to cultivate it, to surround it with love and care? Our spirit, our spirits can grow like that mustard seed and develop so that it can then nurture and shelter others and reach out the branches to more than what existed to begin with. Kingdom of heaven. On earth as in heaven. Next, I'm sure that somewhere along the line, Jesus watched his mother bake bread. He knew also that not only those individuals who were listening to him were men, but also women. And he was giving them the ability to go far beyond where they were at in society, present at his day. We talk about the glass ceiling today for women, but the reality of the glass ceiling back in his day was a trap. 
a confinement, unless, unless even women were allowed to reach their full potential. Now, how many of you have ever taken and used yeast? How many of you failed at using yeast? I haven't decided whether it's because I'm too impatient or I get the water too hot or not hot enough. Somehow, I can put that in bread or in dough and nothing happens for me. And then sometimes when I have had a little luck, I see it start to grow and then I take it and I start pounding it down again because I'm too impatient to wait for it to come to its full potential. Oftentimes, life is like that. Even when we see ourselves growing in spirit, we push it down because we see other parts of society coming in at us, pushing us down, allowing that spirit to be confined rather than to allow that spirit to grow and to reach out, to come to its full potential. Jesus saw that even women of his time and still today have the ability to go far beyond in nurturing this world. All of us, all of us must continue to grow and to ferment, to blossom forth so that others can be nourished and fed like a loaf of bread would do. <clears throat> Nourishment, feeding the hungry, feeding the needy, feeding those individuals who need to be replenished in spirit. Then we get to those guys that I really, at first, when I read these parables, I thought, boy, these guys are selfish. Look at these guys. One finds a treasure, what's he do with it? He buries it again obviously not in his own property, so I don't know what he was doing there, and we're not going to ask that. But besides that, here he is, he takes and he buries it. He sells all that he has just so that he can get that property back and that treasure. And then there's the guy with a pearl. A pearl. One of nature's glories. What is a pearl? A speck of sand that grows within a shell, develops, comes to its full potential. This man sees that this has come into its full potential and wants a part of it. So he also sells everything because he wants that to be a part of him. Selfish guys, right? Yeah, we can look at it that way. But as I read this over again and again, I thought, come on, Marvin, get out of there. Quit thinking about that. Quit thinking about their selfishness. Think about their action, their willingness to give up and risk all that they have in hopes, number one, that that treasure is still going to be there and wanting to be and have it. The other, taking and risking all that he has 
that this pearl is really worth what it's supposed to be worth? Are we willing to risk all that we have to discover the glory of God? Are we willing to risk all that we have in order to reach and see that kingdom of heaven here on earth? Are we willing to give all that we have, to give to others, to share? Potential. Potential for feeding and nourishing this world far beyond the treasure found in the field or a pearl of great worth. Those are looked at as where we should be. For the kingdom of heaven is worth all that we have. Everything. Are we spectators? Or do we move? Do we move forward in this world to reach our full potential? To reach our full potential in giving glory to God? That's something I can't answer for you. <clears throat> Oftentimes when I traditionally do my welcoming of saints, then sinners, always finishing with children of God. Because I pray that we are, first of all, we must recognize that sometimes we are saints, sometimes we are sinners, but we are always children of God. And God looks upon us and cares for us even when we are saintly and also when we are sinners. Because God continues to look at us and see our full potential of who we can be. I don't care how old you are. Even to the end. And that's where the parables come to an end. In the fishnets. In the fishnets. We are gathered in by God. Gathered in. And looked upon. Looked upon. To see whether or not we have reached our fullest potential as human beings caring for one another? Have we reached our spiritual connection with one another as well as with God? Paul. Paul reassures us again and again and again that God's love continues to be with us no matter what our age, no matter where we are at in society, no matter where we are at, even spiritually, God's love is there for us. It is th that is one of the reasons why he can say these words, no power in the sky above or in the earth below, indeed nothing in all creation, will ever be able to separate us from the love of God that is revealed in Christ Jesus our Lord. Does this mean that if we follow the presence of Jesus Christ in our lives that everything is going to be hunky-dory, calm, serene? No, in fact, it may be just the opposite because we are followers. It may be just the opposite because we stand up 
to the rest of society and say, no, enough is enough. We must care for those individuals who are downtrodden. We must care for those individuals who are different. We must care for all people. All people. It is interesting. After 51 years of being a pastor, that I look upon when I was ordained in 1972, that some of the same struggles within our church and our churches throughout the nation is still the same thing. Still the same. Why did we not stand up all of those years ago and continue to fight for equality and equity among all people. All people. Not just a few, not just a segment of society, but all people. We as individuals who proclaim Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior need to protect those individuals who are downtrodden. At a conference last night, I heard words of saying that those individuals who are being murdered and destroyed within the society, who are individuals who are segregated or segmented by society in and of itself, has increased. The trans population of those individuals killed in the United States have gone from 250 to 582 people this year alone. We as individuals, as Christians, need to say enough is enough. Some of you know <clears throat> that for 20 years I was the director for HIV and AIDS services in Hudson County. Too often I saw individuals separated and segregated by race, by gender, by their love of another human being. We as individuals need to see the full potential of the society in which we live. Does it mean that he no longer loves us if we are troubled or calamity, or persecuted or hungry or destitute or in danger or threatened by death? As the scriptures say, for your sake, we are killed every day, and we are slaughtered like sheep. No, despite all these things, overwhelming victory is ours through Christ who loved us. Those words were written in our scripture today by Paul. How many centuries ago? We. must take a risk. We must pull the treasure up out of the earth. We must be willing to share the pearl with others. We must be individuals who allow the yeast to rise. And the mustard seed to grow. We must allow the kingdom of heaven not only to be in our hands this day, but to be in our lives forever. Let us pray. Lord God, guide us, help us, 
no matter who we are, allow our voices to be raised. So when the net is cast and we are drawn into you, that we are put into the basket of those individuals who continue to love and to care for this world. A world that can reach its fullest potential because we care. In Christ we pray. Now, Nikita Bell is going to share with us a blessing. Anyone who knows me knows that I am a caring individual. This was inspired by Reverend Carol. I don't know her last name from the Parcells Church. And also by all of you. I'm not kidding. This is my pearl, if you will, for everyone.
Amén. It is interesting how God continues to uh, allow his presence to be known in us and through us, and also in mystical ways at times. Believe it or not, Nikita did not know what my sermon was going to be about today, yes, sir. but blessing was very appropriate, Nikita, and I thank you. Also, I want to thank Kevin and Tim and Rebecca for being here this morning and to help in sharing this service this day. The hymn which is underlying today's intercessory prayer is Holy God, we praise thy name. We come to you today and thank you for the privilege of praying, praying for others. We've been the recipient of others' prayers so often, and we understand how powerful intercessory prayer can be. We ask you to cleanse our hearts and show us if there is any unconfessed sin in our own lives so that our prayers for others will not be hindered. We thank you that through the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, we can come boldly before you and pray with confidence according to your will and know that you will hear us. We lift up those in our neighborhoods, in our cities, and in our church. Begin with those who follow you and help them influence others for good. Deepen their love for you and for the people around you. Guard them from hypocrisy or from giving in to temptations that could harm. Too often we hear of shootings and stabbings and we give up hope. Let us not be discouraged but help us to seek solutions and remedies to the causes for such behavior. Raise up leaders who will serve you faithfully at all cost. Help them to exemplify your values and make them bold in their faith. Strengthen our families and those closest to us, Lord, so that we can be examples to others. May our love for you help us to love and forgive others and make a difference in this world so we can reach our fullest potential. We pray for all of those in authority and leadership, both locally and throughout the world, a world which often appears to be in chaos with each participant focusing on their own agenda rather than that which is best for all of humanity. Give them your mind and surround them with godly counselors who will exercise integrity and work for justice, morality, and freedom. Help them to esteem you and not dismiss you. Lord, this day we pray for those whom we hold close to our hearts. We ask that you be with John Nagel as he continues to recover from heart surgery. And it is with glad joy that, we may, that he may be released from the hospital this day. Continue to surround him with your love and your care and your healing powers. Hold the family of Luis Goding a lifelong friend of Margaret, as they mourn her passing. Let us hold in our hearts 
Eileen, Ramona's daughter, who is at Highland Hospital. We ask that you be with Ernest and those attending as he undergoes a heart transplant in New York City. We continue our prayers for Dan as he continues to recover from a successful cancer surgery. We continue our prayers of healing for Darlene Wilcox. And we also hold in our prayers Ron Mertens for healing. We ask also that you be and that we pray for comfort for the family and friends of Yvonne Krieger upon her passing this past Wednesday. We pray for the lost, the hurting, the lonely, the sick, the bereaved, and those who are imprisoned behind both visible and invisible walls. Send your comfort, your peace, and your calming presence to those who are without hope. Protect the defenseless and hold them close to your heart. We pray for our laborers to tell the good news of the kingdom of heaven to those people around this world. We pray for all those who are persecuted for their religious beliefs. Make them brave and give them your powerful protection. We pray you will bring swift justice to those who want to destroy others for who they are in body and spirit. So many needs, God, but you are adequate for every need, and you are powerful, and your power is great. So it is in your name that we pray and that we believe. Amen. Lord God, we continue to ask for your presence, your presence here upon the face of this earth. As we pray as one body who is taught by you in praying our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. And now, as we continue the presence of God's caring and love, allow us to be at one in sharing, sharing the gifts which God has shared with us this day. As we share in our the giving of our gifts. A few announcements this morning. First of all, the reading on the rock will be done by Joyce Duckles, a U of R associate professor and Freedom Scholar board member. So we invite you to tune in to that tomorrow evening at seven o'clock. Also, we have a video for you to watch about our national night out. Returning to the church's front lawn, the local observance of National Night Out on Tuesday, August 1st, between 6 and 7.30 p.m. Co-sponsored by Covenant and the Beachwood Neighborhood Coalition, National Night Out brings people together to focus on public safety and justice. This is the 40th anniversary of the nationwide community building event 
that enhances the relationship between citizens and law enforcement. This year, the evening begins with pizza from Peels on Wheels, served at 6.15. At 6.30, we'll learn about bail reform laws, with discussion led by our guest speakers, the Honorable Van White, City Court Judge, and Charlene Lisman, Executive Director of Monroe County Pretrial Services. Join us on August 1st as we show radical hospitality to our neighbors and learn about an important topic on National Night Out. I also would like to share with you uh, that there will be a memorial service for Yvonne Krieger, my mother, on Saturday, August 12th at 10 a.m. here at Covenant. And I do hope that you will join us and allow us to be present uh, to celebrate her 101 years upon the face of this earth. Get ready for our annual New to You sale happening on August 18th and 19th. Donate your gently used dinnerware, housewares, books, decor, craft supplies, sports equipment, jewelry, and clean toys. We'll have a special section for antiques and collectibles. You see all sorts of things pictured in these photos from previous sales, but you don't see any clothes. That's because we ask you to donate your clothes elsewhere so we can concentrate on the types of items you see here. We'll start setting up tables for the sale on Sunday, August 13th after worship and spend time setting up and pricing during the week. Doors open for the sale on Friday, August 18th at 9 a.m. and will be open until 6 p.m. Then, after setting aside a few items for next year's sale, will give away what's left on Saturday, August 19th, between 9 and noon, on what we call Good Neighbor Day. Proceeds from the sale go toward our Uplift Renovation Accessibility Campaign. So, help out the church and help out your neighbors by donating to and volunteering with our New to You sale. Let us stand and rejoice as we sing together our doxology. <clears throat> God, we come to you this day as often we do. We come as individuals to share, to share these gifts which you have presented before us so that we could give and to share with others. These gifts we give out of love and out of caring. We give not only of these gifts, but we also give of ourselves, that you might see us and allow us to reach our full potential in your presence. This we pray in Christ's name. Amen. <clears throat> Let us stand and rejoice as we sing hymn number 540 in your red hymnals, I Love Thy Kingdom, Lord. Church of the streets, he makes it the things of pleasure. 
our benediction today will be responsibly. You are set in the midst of the world's sojourners as people with contributions to make. We know there are no others just like us, nor will the walk of the land. You have a distinctive place in God's design. Your influence extends to places no others can reach. God will work for the good of many through us, and evil will lose its appeal. Be alert to the special opportunities God sets before you day by day. We would discern the hidden treasures and the pearl of great value. Be led forth in joy to a new confidence in all God's will, and may it accomplish through you. Would be judged and quickly, eschewing dull up for wise choices. Amen. You may be seated as we allow the presence of God's Spirit to rejuvenate us and allow us to see what our potential is. As the postlude is played, it is well with my soul. Let the people say amen.